How's it going guys? Here with Jalen Slade. Uh, a lot of you probably have heard of him before, uh, elite 100 meter sprinter. Uh, basically ran 10 flat. And uh, so we're just gonna interview him and you know, get your thoughts on some things, Jalen. Um, so just first off, like what's your experience been like here at IMG? Um, it's never been a long one, but uh, it was it was a really great experience just coming from not too far from Florida, but um, seven hours up in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, a big town, you know what I'm saying, from Douglasville. Uh, it was it was it was it was a great experience. Um, I had a fun time here for my last two years because I've only been IMG for two years, of course, and um, I met a lot of uh, different people from around the world and. Um, had a uh, great experience here, so it was, it was it was really cool. And I graduated this year, so yeah. It was yeah, congratulations on that. Thank yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you've done well since you've been here. So, um, so what have been your biggest challenges so far in your career? Um, I would mainly say just a uh, well, of course, the adjustment from being a high school student to a professional athlete. Cause that's a big jump. You know what I'm saying just. Uh, Going from running with high schoolers and now going with professional athletes, that's just a big difference. You know what I'm saying? Your mentality is a lot more different because, you know, as a high school, you think about just, you know, either winning or just being there, everybody being the best compared to a uh, professional athlete. You still have that kind of mentality, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more different from like 18, 18 year old perspective to like a 22 year old perspective professional athlete. So, like I said, uh, I said that's one big change in my career that happened, and especially leaving my family up in Atlanta for my first year was really of a struggle coming from, you know, a uh, boarding school where you just here by yourself, you're uh, you're just you know on your own basically. So you have to you know learn how to do things on your own, but still you still have a little bit of your family in the background, and saying, but at the day just uh, eat, wake up on your own, eat, go to school, and. Um, train every day so like I said uh, there's, 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 there's like a lot of challenges and a lot that I learned throughout the years throughout my years in board school and throughout my career so. yeah you've had a lot come at you at once mm -hmm. but yeah I mean it's amazing oh, being able to do what you've done though despite all those challenges you've had mm -hmm. um I know last year you had like some hamstring issues yes and so I just wanted to ask you you know how have you been able to recover from that what are some things you've done um I'm still, I'm still um, a little bit in the mentality state of the injury because I've never been injured in my entire life. Well, you know, you have those tweaks and twats, but not like an injury that stopped you from running for like six months or so. Sure. So, of course, um, I went to the U.S. trials and um, I hyperstended my knee, which caused me to basically finish with the U.S. trials in the beginning of the 100, round one of the 100 meter. And, uh, of course, you know, doing it on a big stage that's you know take a toll on you and you know really I just had to get in the mindset of just coming back better than you know uh, next year so which you know I had the opportunity to sign a professional athlete that was a good thing on my head but still not able to run yet or you know fill it out anything like that and then coming back or taking a like a good little I say because I think it was in June so taking a two three three month break is where like you know, I had to get in the mentality of like, hey, like the knee thing is passed on, you know what I'm saying? You got two, three weeks to, you know, reminisce, cry, you know, just chill and relax on it. Now it's a whole nother year. So now it's, you know, a whole nother new year with being a professional athlete. And you just gotta go on and uh, continue on doing what you do. And I would say uh, at the beginning, it was, really, it was really good. I would say it was going as well as process. The, healing behind my knee went away. It still was it was still there, but we just ran on it to kind of, you know, still get it, you know, just a feeling of it and kind of get it used to it, basically. And then afterwards, it went away. And then sometime in January, I pulled my hemi, which is like a strain two, strain three, which is kind of severe, to the point where like, I really could have walked or anything like that, or every time I walk, it hurt. And then with that, that kind of took a toll on me because that just sent me behind a little bit more. And then with that, that went away for a good little month or two. And then I had a tendon in my knee, which kind of prevented me from working out fully to my full potential, going full speed. And um, 
that and then just the continuous of the injuries with after that two weeks and then when spring break hit, everything was fine. And then when I was going into another meet, I think Gainesville, I think one of the meets in Gainesville, I tweaked my hammy literally that two, three days before it again, which was the same one, but it still was, you know, a big issue. And then after that, that just, after like the first tendonitis and then that me, the other hammy, just kind of like my mentality and I would say a little bit of my motivation, my motivation focus just went away to dealing with, you know, a lot of, uh, since, you know, you're a professional athlete, you got a lot of things about, especially you know, on your own by yourself, you got to think about, uh, you know, people to help you out, uh, Know, housing, living, where you want to stay after graduation, and all that sort of stuff. And like I said, I just had that issue on my head. And then uh, the my sacred place was the track where I actually I couldn't do nothing or running like that. So that was just a little bit frustrating. So with that, I said my mentality was like was really like off. And then like it was just like I was, like this year I knew. I knew this year wasn't going to be the year just due to the injuries and I'm so, I was so behind that, you know, we just had to make it what it was. Sure. And then I had like a little knee injury, another knee tonight, but that was like something small that I could have ran through it, nothing too much. But uh, then after that, like I said, um, I had the opportunity to run three other meets, which, you know what I'm saying, I'm getting back into it. Um, there wasn't what we truly wanted, but like I'm saying, I'm not mad I'm just glad that I'm healthy and I'm glad that you know that I had the opportunity to at least run this season and at least see from the injury where I'm at and see you know the process of like what would happen if this happened or that happened mm -hmm. and so um, right now I'm healthy just getting ready for the just trial so awesome excellent yeah I mean those things kind of tend to linger and you just got to manage them as best as you can damage control okay. but it seems like you're back on the right track uh, I, I would ask, what are some of the main things that you would say have helped you over the past few years to where when you really started to take off and progress, what are the main things that helped you? Uh, I would say one, the environment with, you know, going to a different school, changing everything. And when you, when you, I say from my perspective, when I went to the new school and had the opportunity to come here, I said my mentality changed a lot due to from Atlanta. I was just, you know, running and just, you know, and like my career, I did take track seriously, but like when I came here, like when I mean track seriously, I mean training seriously, working hard every day, working, getting enough sleep, take care of my body, everything, you know, comes with it. So I would say the environment, which helped a lot with, you know, having this wonderful, you know, place to train at, place to work at, school, all that sort of stuff. And then I would say the coach, the coaching because if you don't believe in your coach or you don't trust in your coach you can't go too far with it and just having a having a coach who you know knows literally what he's talking about because he's been through it he um went through everything exactly everything i went through and i kind of believed in me before i even believed in myself and going far in the process that i was that you know uh that really helped the progress in that and then I would just say the uh, people behind me, you know what I'm saying? The sort of support, the fans that I have behind, the friends, the family, all of them, the ones who really support behind me, and, you know, um, who help, you know, help support to who I am now. And uh, those who helped me when I was kind of big headed, kind of, you know, in the way of being cocky a little bit, they helped me, you know, calm down, be a little bit, a lot more humble than I am, which I am now. And then, uh, you know, those who just, Help me uh, lift up my head and everything. So I say all of those those three thingies that like, help me, like you know, help me to the person in progress too. For sure. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I was gonna ask you maybe a little bit about your your training. So mm -hmm. would you say that your training program is more short to long or long to short or a mixture of both? You know, like a lot of times there's programs short to long. You know, you start off with block starts and you start doing 60s and then as the year goes on then you do 150s later in the mm. year 200s maybe 300s later in the year as opposed to doing it the other way around do them longer and a little bit slower but as the year goes on they get shorter and faster so is there a program that you've tended to be on yeah so uh 
last year and this year is just about the same thing, but a little bit more slower. Throughout my season is literally from December to all the way to like August. Mm -hmm. So it's very longer compared to uh, high school student, which is probably like January to like May or June, July, still doing you. But it's like, it's like a little mixture, but at the beginning where it's like fall time is where we do a little bit more of, of a longer training where we do a little bit of grass ones mainly, but they're more longer. So like we do 60, 45, 30, 30, 30 second, 51 minute runs. Okay. So longer. Yeah, stuff. longer stuff, mm -hmm. a little bit longer stuff. And then I would say like a little bit and a little bit more in the fall coming like winter time. That's where we're back on the track. And then we're still doing long stuff, but still doing a little bit of sprint. Sure. But mainly just a little bit longer, like four, three, two, one. Uh, let's say uh, 350, 150s, uh, broken, broken fours, broken twos, uh, 350s, and you know, a little bit of a time try to see where we at from, you know, progress. So it starts off like, like we're very like a longer distance. And then kind of in the springtime, that's where we start like, sprinting a little bit more, a little bit more short, shorter stuff, a little bit, but still have that, you know, still have that little 300 minute back end, a little bit of 200, 250. Um, and then, you know, then we hit the 150, and then when we end season, it's a little bit more short, of course, because, you know, you got four days, to three days of training. Um, and then you just gotta, you know, get race ready. So, yeah, I would say it starts off, it starts, it's a little bit of a mixture, but mainly the, uh, the long to short. The long to short is, sure, yeah, yeah. It's where it's at. A lot of great sprinters have come out doing that. I mean, I think um, even you say in Bolt, and a lot of the other great guys have ran like the four, whether it's part of their training or whatever. And, um, and they do, they go shorter. It seems that it helps some sprinters to really relax. Yeah, it does. It definitely does because you know you come from uh, you know hitting longer stuff, which you know if you're a one-two guy, you know the long stuff is a killer for you, of course. And then you just do it for so long that you get used to it and you get adapted. Because like four, three, two, ones are my favorite. Or my favorite, and a lot of people don't like that. But you know, but I hate the, I hate the repeat three hundreds because the repeat three hundreds is it's just so repetitive and just it's like back to bad that it just it's, it kills you, especially the time that certain people go on that. But uh, like once you get used to it, and then once you do what you have to do, it helps out in the day. But then you get to you do have that time of like you're like I'm tired of doing. Let's just do sprints, let's do a little shorter and stuff like that. So. Yeah, you can't definitely uh, muscle your way through like the long stuff. You, <laughs> you can't force can. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you've got to be smooth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so, what about weight training? Mm. So, uh, weight training came, came a very long way. Uh, I didn't back at home. You know, weight training wasn't really a big thing for track and field, but I did football. So, you know, of course, you just do max. Or you just you know play around or whatever in the weight room and stuff. But coming here, uh, uh, Fuda, Fuda and Coach Chris who was basically you know the, uh, who helped me a lot with the how big I was because coming in I was very very scrawny and skinny. And uh, at the beginning I was not big on weights because you know what I'm saying it just feel like why you need weights for it? like all you gonna do is get bigger and stuff like that and you don't you don't need to be big you need to be light and. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, I learned that there's a lot more into it with weights. And once I had the people behind me and the support of, you know, Coach Footer with, you know, helping me and maturing me and let me, like, at least understand what's, what's the meaning behind all this stuff, then that's where, like, I got the liking of it. That's where um, I really, you know, enjoyed weights. And um, where, like, I do it, like, basically sometimes three times a week or even twice a week and um, basically do different things uh, at the beginning we start off with very kind of lightish to just like see like very more technique we we'll learn mm -hmm. about the technique learn why we doing this and then during like the winter fall time that's where we kind of like hit hard mm -hmm. so you get stronger power quick you know what I'm saying a little bit more bouncy and then uh, then like we still we still have that we still have that kind of tendency of having low but since you're a sprinter sometimes sometimes since you're a sprinter you do a lot of more uh, a lot more reps than uh, a lot more heavy mm -hmm. so it's, it depends on how it depends how uh, it depends on what coach you well mm -hmm. food will do everything but it depends on what he wants sure. you to do between you which your base you are and stuff and um, I would say that. Uh, I, I like I truly do believe that weights definitely did help me a lot with 
more of like just the attribute with um, block words, with being stronger, coming around the track. Um, and um, I would just say that um, weight is definitely a big factor. It's definitely like, it's definitely a, took a toll for me because I always tell the wife that um, I don't need to be doing all, too many weights and stuff like that. He's like, you need to get more powerful. I'm like, I am power. Like, I got all the power that I need. Like, why do I need to get more powerful? Yo, so you can't get more powerful. I'm like, man, like, I'm, I feel like I'm strong enough. So I'm like, I'm good. Let me just, you know, do what I need to do in there. But he's like, always like, you know, you still can, you can't never do too much. You know what I'm saying? It's ain't no fool. He's like, you know, you can still, um, Still do it lightly, but still get some work in just to, you know, get a little more powerful, a little bit more explosive, mm -hmm. a little bit more quicker. And same thing, like we do, uh, sometimes when I don't go to weight, we do boards, where it basically helps with uh, more of your glute workout. So you do a glute workout, do a little abs. So it's like different things with, you know, different programs and into the waist. But I'll say just the process of coming from um, not doing weights and not liking weights and then liking weights and doing weights and taking it seriously, you can see like a big improvement in what you do. So. Sure. Do you do uh, Olympic weight lifting then? Like uh, clean, power clean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely do, at, at, at a certain extent, some some lifting, some, some Olympic lifting, mm -hmm. not too much of lifting, but like snatches. Mm -hmm. We used to do that last year, but like not, like we did support where like, where like we didn't know how to do it in oh, a way, so sure. it didn't yeah. really injure the person. Injured use in a way if you don't technically know how to do it. So we had to like slow it down a little bit to a point where like this year it wasn't really too much of Olympic lifting. It was more like, you know, simple like power clean, hand cleans and, you know, single legs and double mm -hmm. legs, stuff like that. But I think throughout the transition of my career, I definitely probably am going to get a little bit in Olympic lifting and stuff. Yeah, they're very technical. I mean, it's, a own, it's its own sport in yeah. itself. So. Yeah, if your technique gets a little bit off, you're gonna feel it. Yeah, you yeah. definitely feel it. You definitely feel it a lot. Um, other than that, um, what would you say as far as when you're on the track? Mm -hmm. um, are there any particular cues that you try to focus on? Um, you know, whether it's putting your foot down, or you know, some people focus on lifting, or a lot of arm drive. What are some cues that you focus on? I would say uh, it's, it depends on. It depends on, it's, it's different each and every year that I've seen from, because um, a little bit of last year, last year a little bit of my block work was terrible. Uh, my endurance was lacking a little bit, but once we figured out all those points, it's where like, it helped a lot, like, like, um, like where all indoors, my block work was either me stumbling or me coming out of the block class, and that's where we worked so hard on you know, coming out fast, doing a lot of block ways, really getting the technique and the angles and the ways of actually how to, you know, come out the block, especially with doing a little bit of waste, because waste is, you know, helps you come out the blocks with more power, more, you know, speed, more strength, pushing out the blocks, driving your knee a little bit longer, and uh, basically just different things and from last year. And then in my endurance part, where is when I seen where I ran a 20.27, and then went back another two weeks and then ran a 20.52. But out of the two weeks, you can kind of see like what's the difference between when you ran a 20.27 and that 20.52, which I told him, I was like, coach, I'm lacking a little bit of that endurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you get back and hit it probably like three two ones or four two ones. You know what I'm saying? Something that just mm -hmm. hit, like get me back into, you know, back to where we at. Mm -hmm. And then exactly when, when I told him that, we find that out. We did a lot of four two ones, went back and ran a 2020. Which, you know, we say, okay, boom, like, that helped a lot. We see, like, you know, like, so it depends on how you feel about, it's, 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 it's all if you know, if you know your body, you're saying, if you know how your body works and you know what you need for it, just go ahead and, you know, attempt to do it and try it. If it doesn't end up working, then there must be another way in trying to find it. But don't try to do something. I wouldn't say don't try to, don't try to do extra when you don't really need to do extra. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, uh. Yeah. And I'll say for this year, this year was, was me just getting back into the rhythm with everything and getting back spinning because I used to, since since I uh, put so much into the block work is where I lost my top end speed and where mm. I used to I used I used to back then catch people at the end, but now people catch me at the end, so I had to you know get back to a little bit of spinning. We talked today about block work, about getting my arms a little bit more open instead of so tight. 
and um, you know, it's basically just you just um, just this knowing the cues and knowing what you really need to work on is from your point of view, and then from another person's point of view who's watching you from a third person perspective. And once you have that, once you have that perspective, and you y'all put y'all together, and then boom, you know what I'm saying? You um, you get a nine nine, or you get you know what you want your your PR or whatever. So. So when you're running really well, what does that feel like for you? Um, I will I would mainly say it's like a uh, it's a big achievement, but it still makes me hungrier. Mm -hmm. So it makes you like yeah, I would say that. Like, let's say let's say you have a good race, you know what I'm saying, and uh, and it's like a big 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 race, you know what I'm saying, where like you PR for the one and two, you know what I'm saying. Of course, you know, for me, I'm gonna be very proud, you know, very happy. I'm saying go go out because usually when I when I have a meet I don't eat so I'll be very very oh, hungry afterwards yeah. so you know go treat myself with a good steak or something like that and then you know the next day it's just another it's another, it's another day you know what I'm saying you just you did what you had to do but the next day you're thinking about you know like what you could have done better to mm -hmm. improve it or you know what could like like what uh, how can you beat it the next time basically mm -hmm. and. Um, Basically, you know, I would say with track is just, you know, it's it's mainly consistent, but it's mainly just, you know, you want to be better each and every time, sure, each yeah. and every day. You know what I'm saying? You, you you get upset when you're like at a point where you do good and then you do bad, and then you be like, like, what, what's up? Why is it going like that? Because this track is very so inconsistent with certain things. Like you can have a tailwind or a headwind, or you can yeah. miss one step in the race, mm -hmm. and that's just mess everything up mm -hmm. or you couldn't have like a bad mistake and you end up breaking the record or something mm -hmm. like that you know what i'm saying so it's just yeah. it's very different when it comes to track and field but i would just say like from my perspective it's it's very it's very happy and then it's very like you know motivation motiv 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 well, motivation motivation you know, yeah, yeah motivating due to you know people saying congrats people are being happy you you seeing that you put the work in you doing what you need to do sure so like when you're sprinting, do you feel like an up and down action mostly? Um, I know a lot of top sprinters express that. Uh, like when a I'm piston like action when like you're a, actually running. Like an up and down? Yeah, like a piston like action. Uh, Maybe at certain parts of the run. Like start. I don't really feel too much of an up and down. Mm -hmm. More than, cause I used to, I, it depends, it depends on how I run or mm -hmm. which ways I run it. Cause there'd be times where I run it just striding cause I'm long and tall, mm. where I do feel that, I feel majority of that springing. So do you or, feel like a full range of motion? Yeah, essentially. You, mm -hmm. yeah. you definitely feel Complete that free step. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. So not cutting them off and mm -hmm. not trying to be too big and reach and pull. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cause if you feel too reach and pull, and then you you just not gonna feel like you're moving, or you're just gonna feel like yeah, you just running. But mm -hmm. if you you know if you actually like turning, then you won't you won't you won't realize that much of a spin. You feel more of like a like a like a push motion going, mm -hmm. like you're just spinning, you just moving forward. You feel a bit of a push. Though. Yeah, you feel you feel more mm -hmm. of a push more than a up and down motion. But mm -hmm. I feel like more of an up and down motion is mainly a little bit when you're like going. I won't say too like too fast because if you're going. If you're doing a 100, you're not gonna really feel it. And you're right. Like, mainly, you're thinking about, hey, boom, fuck, finish that, finish that. So like, before you know it. Yeah, exactly. But like during a workout, of course, you may feel that little mm -hmm. up and down feeling or that you know, push and stuff. So it comes with different things. Okay. But for me, I really, I don't, I don't really really notice or realize up and down. Like, sure. I feel more of a push or more of like a, hey, I need to spin. I'm lacking just staying at the same speed more than you know, who knows. Or, and I'm sure you don't feel heavy footed when you're running. No, definitely not, because I run on my toes. Especially when you're running well. Yeah, fast, exactly. You yeah. definitely don't feel heavy footed. Mm -hmm. Other than you uh, coming coming from a hard workout and then weights, and then the next day your legs are heavy. At the time you feel heavy on your legs, but your foot is never is never the point where it's like heavy on. Um, I know that you've made some technical changes as far as like toe dragging and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, I used to, I used to, so back then where, back in Atlanta, I used to, if you look back in the video, the block group is just uh, a whole nother level. And um, 
It's just where I, I don't think I had a little hair recovery hard. I probably did it most likely because of the way I ran, but it was where I was taught by one of my coaches or both of my coaches on how to basically keep a low hair recovery and you know what coaches who do something I know they're talking about, don't something I know they're talking about. The main thing to go to is uh, toe drag, which you know that's where you know where your toes basically keep in contact with the ground when you're running. Yep. coming out the blocks of when you're running. Mm -hmm. And with that, he told me, hey, you know, if you do that, you can have a little bit more of a low heel recovery and more of a, you know, more of a drive. Mm -hmm. So I did that so much to the point where like, it was just a habit. Where it, was, it wasn't so much of a habit, but it's, it, I tend to do it and I tend to not do it. But I did it during like, like doing a blowout or anything like that. I tend to do toe drags a lot to the point where like, Literally, I had to wear a, a different shoes every week just because the, I used to get holes in my shoes, even holes in your spikes, even though spikes used to be lasted for a very long time. But I used to always do it because I used to toe drag so much and I was taught that to, you know, but in my opinion, it helped, it helped me at that point in time. But then when I came here, the why was like, see, this is for for you as, 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 as you know, Dylan Slade, toe drag is not the best for you because you see, that you know, you see that you stumbling sometimes. You see that you still the last one coming out the blocks. You know what I'm saying? So why don't you mm -hmm. attempt to at least keep a little bit of that toe drag, but kind of lift up the toe drag. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to keep your toes a little bit. Just step um, over your ankle. Yeah, step over your ankle mainly. Yeah. And I used to be so toey that I'm just naturally toe dragging. So he said doty flex too, of course. So if you doty flex your foot, you it prevents you from basically toe dragging mm -hmm. a lot more compared to. If you don't, if you have your foot pointing like like how I was, mm -hmm. you just naturally toe dragging no matter. And the leg's going is. forward, but it's not. You're not getting that force back. Yeah, you're not getting that force backward because you're so much on your toes that you're not getting. You're not pushing nothing. You're not even driving or digging no. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's when you talk to me like, hey, you need to you need to get the habit of not toe dragging no more because it works for some people, but for you as a daily slave, it doesn't work for you. So we gotta find a different way of learning how to not toe drag and learn how to. Get another way of you know driving and digging, and that's where you know where I'm at now mm -hmm. is where it helped a lot. Where I stopped toe dragging, and then I just learned how to keep a very low hair recovery with you know between your ankles, mm -hmm. and then you just be able to you know push out with a lot more aggression, a lot more digging and drive a lot more. So I'll say from the develop from toe dragging to not toe dragging, it helped a lot for my opinion. But like I say it works. For me. Work for some people. Some people who toe drag a lot, like Christian Coleman. And, yeah, um, both. We have both. And then from other people, some people do side to side, like Michael, Trayvon, Christian, sure. all of them. So it's just like, it, it depends on the person. But in my opinion, uh, I don't recommend toe dragging because toe dragging is just. It's, it's overcorrection. Yeah, it's overcorrection. Like uh, everybody sees one thing and then they think that that's the best thing to right. do. Right. One size fits all and yeah, we're exactly. all different. Yeah. Like, everybody's a different person. So, like, all you can, all you can do is just. Do you like I say? We try. You have to. You have to. You have to fill it out. Like I say, if you say one thing and it doesn't go that way, you just gotta find a different way to you know fix that correction. You know what I'm saying you can't just continue on letting that person do that, but it's gonna get a habit of doing it consistently, and then that, that's gonna mess up. That's gonna mess up them because you know that they're doing something wrong, but mm. you're not correcting it, or at least find another way to you know uh, help them in a way. You know what I'm saying. So that's why I would say like. Dwight, Dwight never recommend, you know, toe, toe, uh, toe dragging because, like I say, he, mm -hmm. he's, he's he been through it. He understands that, you know what I'm saying, it's not necessary or needed to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like I say, every person is different in their own way. So, toe dragging works for you. Keep on doing it. If it helps you a lot, you know what I'm saying, keep on doing it. But, in my opinion, it didn't, it didn't help me. It, it helped me at one point, but then it, as, as your body keep developing and stuff, it just it just doesn't help me help with you no more. So sure yeah eventually you gotta find your own race run your own race mm -hmm. yeah exactly and we're seeing people i think get away from that in this day and age unfortunately they do. but it's great to have that insight from uh, somebody who's done it at a top level mm -hmm. um so you know you got uh nationals coming up and what are some things that you're doing to prepare for i mean maybe not just this national but like any big meet what are some things that you consider uh i would just say it's, it's nothing that you do different compared to a big meet or a little small meet. At the end of the day, you still want to come out and show out and 
achieve, uh, well, I almost say achieve, but do your best mm -hmm. as in PR or whatever. So you still come in with that same mentality in every meet, even if it's a small or big meet that, hey, I want to PR, hey, I want to, hey, I want to win. Uh, some people mm -hmm. want to win and stuff like that. But, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's all that same mentality, but it's a lot more focus in a way between um, where you go to U20s or US trials compared to a Nike National with a high schooler. But for my for my perspective, it's a lot more of a bigger mentality due to, you know, me being 18 and me going against, well, I'm doing it 20, but I'm saying as perspective, like you said, anywhere else, like the Olympics or Worlds, you're going to get grown men who, who you just, who you just running 10 O's and you got people running like nine, eight, nine, six consistently. So it's like, you're going to get them and now you're trying to like beat them and try to, you know, get a team, get a spot on a team. Now it's just like, now you have to run like these bad boys. Now you have to run like that, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's nothing different because along the road, you're going to see them eventually. It's not like, it's not like you, you're, not, you're definitely not going to duck the action like that or not see them at all. But you know what I'm You're gonna have that one person that's faster than you or you're gonna have that one person that's, you know, same thing as you, you know what I'm saying? But that mentality is still there with, you know, being motivated and doing your best and doing what you know you could do. And that's by training real hard every day. Like I say, if you do not, if you if you lack the training, you're not gonna see results that you, that you want to have, you know what I'm saying? That's just like right, something. Or sometimes the mentality of it, when you do good at, you, you do good at training, but when you at the meet, your mentality is a little bit different, or you don't have, you know, we don't have that training. What you do good in training, you don't have that for a track meet, and that's just more of a mentality than what I've learned from too, because I do good at training, but it's not showing during the actual meet. So like I said, it's more of a mentality, it's more just converting in your hand, like, hey, as long as you do that same thing that you did for training and everything else, you will get that same result that you did from uh, from the actual meet. So I would say that we're uh, we're at a point where like we just mainly focus on trying to get back a little bit a little bit of race ready and a little bit of uh, training into it too. Because like I said, we missed so much. We missed like sure. literally like four or five months. We start working mm -hmm. out literally the beginning of May almost. Yeah. So I missed so much of training that we try to we try to still get lack of a little bit of that a little bit of that training training in the fall time. Oh, we're not the fall time, but the winter time and spring time, and then still add a little bit of spring and the race training in between it, so we can get ready for U20s and you know. But so you don't need to taper down much. Yeah, no, because you still have you still have certain to a certain extent a little bit of that workout that you did from the winter time. You know what I'm saying a little bit of the spring time, but you just gotta hit it again. You gotta yeah. hit it so you can get back in and feel that you know. Feel for how you felt in the springtime. So that's the same thing, like how uh, how you are race ready and you're running, but then like since you race so much that you're just like losing a lot. Something you got to take the rest, or something you got to hit back what you used to do, and just hit it for like one time, and then you be back to where you like. You know what I'm saying that's what happened to me last year, where where I hit that, and then I just basically improved throughout, but then I missed something, so we had to hit back that again to say get that. You know, it's like a uh, how much explain it. It's like uh. It's like a it's like a candle burning and you see it slowly burning and then like you need it to come back up so that's what it feels like so it's feel like you slowly burning and then once you hit that once you hit what you need to hit and then it's come back up to light and then you expect yourself to yeah basically awesome. um so other than that just maybe some life harder questions uh, what's your favorite musician my favorite musician mm -hmm. uh I would say uh, I'm more of like a R and R and B guy, a little bit of calm. So I like Tyler the Creator. I like uh, I like uh, Fred Fred Fries. I like um, a little bit of Daniel Caesar. So around that category, a little bit of you know, kind of entertaining, a kind of prank, a kind of like a different genre. Like I like rap too. I like Lil Baby. I like all them, but I'm more of like a calm, chill guy. So. I listen to some music that doesn't have words in it, it's calming music and stuff like that, but just because that's that's what I prefer and that's what I like. So it's Help like you recover really, from yeah, the track. Exactly. So it helps me like cool down, helps me just get my mind fo focused. I love listening to J. Cole during my track meets. J. Cole, Meek Mill, that's where that's my go-to people that I listen to a little bit more to attract me. So cause you know, J. Cole is more he's not like a he's a rapper of course, but he's like that kind of like a 
find a, um, a motivation type of like lyrical rap, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So those more of the musicians that I listen to a little bit more, so. Any shows that you watch? Ah, so yeah, I like, uh, my favorite show is Psych. I don't, a lot of people don't know what Psych is, but uh, that's like my go-to show that I literally watch literally like 50 times. And it's like literally 12 episodes, 12 seasons. I literally watch it 12 wow. seasons. And I watch it like literally 50 times. It's just funny to me in my pen. But I like I like shows. I like Supernatural. I like a little bit of CW where uh, you got um, Green Arrow, mm -hmm. The Flash. I like that. Um, I'm watching. I watch a little bit. Of, I love anime, so I watch. Right now, I'm watching Naruto, but I finished like Demon Slayer. I got to finish a little bit more. I may start on Attack on Titan, not for sure yet, but uh, watch like a, a lot of a lot of anime. So it's like different things that I watch. I love. I love. I like shows that's like kind of like. Different, weird, mm -hmm. not like fantasy, just, yeah, or fantasy, yeah, something yeah. like that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And um, I do kind of like a little drama. Like I watch uh, uh, the Kardashians with my girlfriend or something like that. Or I watch Ozark. Ozark is really, really good. I like that. And um, yeah, so I like I like different shows. But for like a go-to show that I watch nonstop, it's basically like psych or anime, something like that. So. so what else do you do to get away from the track? Any hobbies or things that you like to do? Yeah. So. Uh, a lot so at one point i tried to uh at one point i was so um into track where track was like my everyday life that i tried to find myself outside of that mm. so uh, like i'm in the process of doing that where you know i hang out with friends go out and go to movies or something like that uh just chill relax play some video games with my cousins or new friends and stuff like that uh hang out with my girlfriend mainly, hang out with the fam, do something like outside of track that just get me away from it. So I want to focus on too much on it. Cause you know, like I said, once you, once you, once you love your sport and once you, you know, so dedicated to it, like it's hard for you to, you know, find something else to do or move away from it instead of having that into it. So like I said, I try to, uh, I try to find myself outside of it and do a little bit more uh, outside of track. So I, you know, I can just have my free time away from track. So it's like different things I do. I like doing crossword puzzles. I like I like playing mind games with people like tic tac toe, mm -hmm. uh, chess checkers. You know what I'm saying? Connect board. So I like playing all those games. That like Monopoly. I believe one to times to let y'all know. So I went to time straight away and straight in the road back at the school. They can wow. tell you, but uh, I just get lucky. But yeah, I like I like doing other things outside. You know, stuff well, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out. Yes, um, of course, so of course. thank you for having me. Absolutely. So where can people find you, like on social media and stuff like that? Oh, uh, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at the uh, Fisher J Slade and. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't have TikTok. Everybody told me I should make TikTok, mm. but I'm not. I don't have like the dedication or anything. No like time that. for that. Yeah, so. <laughs> cool. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, so. thank you for having me. Yeah, man. thanks it was again. Really cool having uh, this conversation and these deep mm -hmm. topics. With you, so it was really yeah, cool. always great to hear from somebody who's done it at a high level. So uh, best of luck to you going thank forward you. Uh, next week at the national meet and thank beyond you. that. Appreciate it. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.